Hi guys, uh, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. Today on the channel, I've got a very special guest uh, from Kenya and she goes by the name of... African Tigress, the one and only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's her first time in Zimbabwe and I'm going to be asking her a few questions about what she thinks of Zimbabwe so far. So the first question, uh, what, is, what are your first impressions about Zimbabwe? Nairobi. <laughs> <laughs> Really? Actually, I like it. My mm -hmm. first impressions, what I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, I like the fact that it's not a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it gives me that vibe of Nairobi. Some parts of the city, right. totally like Nairobi. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's amazing. So you feel at home here? Eh? I feel at home and <laughs> the people look like Kenyans. <laughs> so like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, that's why some people are actually talking to me in the, I don't know which language they talk to me. And then I'm like, sorry, ma'am, I cannot understand. <laughs> because they, they can't see that you're actually not from around. Uh, and when you give them the accent, yes. they think you're from here. When you say, sorry, ma'am, I cannot understand. <laughs> understand. Yeah, yeah. Because okay. in Kenya, that would be, sorry, ma'am, I cannot understand. Oh, I see, I see. So you're picking up on the accent as well. Yes, I uh, like it. <laughs> no, a, a lot of YouTubers avoid coming to Zimbabwe. They'll come to Zambia, they go to Botswana, they'll encircle us and then they'll leave Zimbabwe. And then they'll avoid Zimbabwe. Um, what made you brave enough to come to Zimbabwe? Because I like going where people don't go and where people don't expect me to go. And mm. uh, because I want to go to every country. Right. So I actually enjoy most going to places I've not seen content about. Because when you go to such places, mm -hmm. you're more likely to get a candid draw experience. Right. Like you don't have um, a, a preconceived whatever view of view the country. Of, of the country. Right. So when you're going there, it's, it's new, it's novel. So I love, I love that. That's why I've been to places like Guinea-Bissau. Right. That's yes. a lot of people, I have never seen content about it. Mm -hmm. So I love going to where most people are not going. I know a lot of times people expect me to go to places, but I'm highly unpredictable <laughs> and I like to surprise people. So. Exactly. I, yeah. I, I'm surprised that, that, uh, <laughs> that you're actually here. Yeah. So uh, apart from Zimbabwe, how many other African countries have you visited? Uh, probably about 20. Wow. Yeah, I've been to West Africa, about uh, Gambia, Guinea-Bissau, mm -hmm. Senegal, Nigeria, all East African countries, and I've been to South Africa and right. other countries outside Africa. Wow, that's amazing. Huh? I yeah. hope I can also do the same, grow, mm -hmm. grow to be at your level. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, <laughs> so since you've been here, mm -hmm. have you tried any of our local food? Saza. <laughs> <laughs> and how 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 was Sanza? What did you have it with? Um, I had it with chicken and skuma wiki, mm -hmm. and it's almost like what we have in Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's almost like ugali, but Sanza is soft. It's like raw ugali. <laughs> 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 Some people would not take it. Even me, yeah. I struggled because. Mm -hmm. Uh, the portion I had, if I was actually having the ugali that I'm used to, yeah. I would probably have more. Oh, is it? Yeah, I would have had it. I only had half because it's just too soft for... <laughs> yeah, I've seen yeah, videos of ugali. But it's bearable. Like, it's something... I, I, I can't say I'm having challenge because I can still eat it. Okay. Yeah, I can still eat it and the food is nice, chicken is nice and yeah. Right. So I the, love the, it. The, the recipes are quite similar. Yeah, the skuma wiki, yeah. So I think okay. more or less the same. More or less the same. We even have your people in Kenya, you know? Yeah, I discovered that you have <laughs> Yeah, we have shown up people who are Kenyan citizens now. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's interesting. So Africa is becoming one village. Absolutely. So whilst you're traveling in Africa, uh, which country is your favorite so far? Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure you're not trying to just flatter me? <laughs> Is it? Oh, that's, uh... Uh, okay. Actually, uh, there's aspects of uh, every country that I have loved. Mm -hmm. I have loved, um, like some places, it would be maybe the food, some places the lifestyle, some mm -hmm. places how chilled it is. There's, an as there's something good in every country. So it's really, really hard for me to select a favorite country. Right. But so far, um, I'm loving Zimbabwe too, because it's just like home. Right. Yeah. And uh, since you've been traveling in Africa, which country would you say you had the most challenges? You know, being a solo female traveling alone, which country has given you hmm. uh, the most challenges? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of challenges uh, were they? My challenges mm. now. Especially this year, I faced most of the challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the countries I uh, will start with. Uh, let me say Congo. Congo, I had lots of challenges. I could not relate to the food. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. So in some places, or sometimes I had to survive on just soda and bread. Wow. And uh, maybe when I went to the market to look for fruits, I only found bananas. Maybe it's the neighborhood I was. But I really had a big struggle with food, and especially the uh, most places I went, they would put mayonnaise. And I don't like mayonnaise. Oh, really? So they put mayonnaise in almost everything. And yeah. I don't like mayo, so mm -hmm. I, didn't, I didn't take that. And um, there's a time I went to a restaurant for take home food, a nice restaurant, a decent restaurant. And I bought seven slices of plantain. Like one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, like seven slices, which is like one plantain split seven times. And what is a plantain? Seven dollars. Uh, it's banana-like, but it's right. not banana. It's okay. a type of banana that you don't eat it raw, you fry it. Wow. So they okay. gave me seven slices of plantain for se When I opened, like, this is seven dollars, I could not believe. So well, like I don't know if it was a fraud <laughs> or maybe it's just yeah. that expensive. I also found generally the country so expensive. Even getting accommodation, mm -hmm. like for an Airbnb, getting and Airbnb, let me say, like, because I travel on budget, I tend to cut on cost. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got an Airbnb, you pay about $25 or $30. It has no internet, no, like, it was just a big challenge. But yeah. it's a very beautiful place, like, especially out of the capital, mm -hmm. it's very mm -hmm. beautiful. Is it? Extremely beautiful, wow. like, the views and very green. And the people are also lovely and nice. Okay. Yeah, so that's challenge in Congo. Right. In um, Guinea-Bissau, my first challenge, the challenge I had in Guinea-Bissau was getting into the border, the immigration, corruption, and that was it. Because right. right. they made us sleep at the border. They denied us entry until the next day. That's when we were able to access the country. But mm -hmm. after the border, everything was nice. Wow. Like, I, I, I was planning to be there for maximum two weeks or one and a half weeks. I ended up being there for a full month. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, right? and even leaving, I just left because I had to continue the journey, but I didn't want to leave. Right. Uh, of course, Nigeria, I got an accident my first day. <laughs> <laughs> Nigeria, oh. <laughs> A motorbike yeah. hit me and oh, he sorry. ran away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like he hit me and like by the time you're raising, so my yeah. leg was swollen and uh, it was just frustrating. The internet, mm -hmm. uh, they were not selling SIM cards at that time. I, they have closed system, you cannot buy a SIM card. All right. And also like uh, power outages, so mm -hmm. it's always generator, generators. And you know, it's quite loud generators all the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, in some neighborhoods where they have different different gen like every apartment has different generator producing different sounds so that was mm -hmm. like really tough especially for content creation because mm -hmm. you have to do voiceovers you need the peace and quiet yeah so. especially when you're doing voiceovers right. so it's really really hard but overall i even the, despite the challenges i had in these countries mm -hmm. i had an amazing experience there oh wow, that's good yeah and uh, tell me around, uh, how, how do you go around, let's say you go to a country which is not English speaking. Mm -hmm. I imagine Guinea-Bissau wasn't an English country. Yeah. <laughs> how do you deal with the, with the language barrier? So, um, sign language. <laughs> <laughs> I create my own language. Wow. <laughs> it's not like the official sign language or yeah. what. Yeah. But uh, at the moment right now, that since my channel is big, you know, I have like 106,000 people. I didn't even know. How it <laughs> so when you go to these countries, just the time you'll make your first video, mm -hmm. surprisingly, you find that you have subscribers from every country. They could right. be living in that country or the diaspora. Mm -hmm. So you find that there's someone who's watching who knows somebody or has family or someone there. Right. So when you're going to that country, they'll definitely say, oh, you're in my country. Oh, could you meet so-and-so? Could you, oh, I'm seeing you facing challenges in this and this. Oh, mm -hmm. talk to so-and-so. They give me contacts. They give people emails and all that. So it always ends up being easier. But most often, I would also use the translating app. All right. So I do the translating app, say what I want, write, type what, then I play the audio to someone to listen. And yeah, and that's how we survive. And sometimes you just go with the flow if there's no one who's understanding. You go with the flow. If people are uh, enjoying, you join them and enjoy. If they are dancing, okay. join them and dance. And yeah, if they are, yeah, if they eat. So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah. this is a very random question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unrelated to the countries. Mm -hmm. uh, if we were to, if to go back six or seven years, uh -huh. did you ever imagine yourself being a YouTuber? No. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how uh, did you become a YouTuber? Uh, six, seven years ago, mm -hmm. I was looking at 
myself working because I'm in the healthcare field. My right. education background is in healthcare. Mm -hmm. So just attaining the highest uh, in terms of education in the field and probably working with the big organizations like the mm -hmm. United Nations, right. uh, the World Health Organization and all that. Like mm -hmm. that's what I was, I was looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because so I was a student you? back six, oh, six, six, six I was a student. Okay. I was still a student, but as a student, you know, as you're in school, that is what you... Yes, that's, that's what you focus on. That's yeah, what you're yeah, you're you focusing do. on growing your career right. or mm -hmm. becoming, achieving all these dreams. So, yeah, right. that's what I would have thought. So, becoming a YouTuber, so because I was aggressive, I was a student leader at university. And um, I was also like, I've always been this kind of person. I can call it go getter. Like right. I want something, and I always wanted to be better. Mm -hmm. And even when I was in school, by the time I was finishing, I wanted to say like I don't, I don't want to leave school with just papers. What mm -hmm. else can I have? Because all of us are going to leave school with papers. With papers yeah. So what would make you stand out? So I did a lot of volunteer work and all that. So mm -hmm. um, I did trainings with international organizations, and I got lots of opportunities to travel outside the country. Okay. So when I could travel, all of mm -hmm. them were funded, like most places I was going, they were all funded. Mm -hmm. So I really never had a struggle and then that's when I used to take videos, I lose my footages right. or photos, my phone gets stolen and I lose it. Then I, my sister introduced me to YouTube because mm -hmm. I didn't know much about it, but she's, um, she was a news anchor, so media people always know yes, these kind yes, of things. things yeah. yeah, so she introduced me to it. She taught me. We started together. She gave up. <laughs> Bella, I don't know what. <laughs> why, why do you think she gave up? I really don't know because she had a lot of other things she was doing. Because oh, okay. okay. working in the media is a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think maybe that's what made her really give up. Mm -hmm. For me, when, she intro when someone introduces an opportunity to right. me, you go for it. I'm picking it and <laughs> running. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, that's my sister's done introduced me to it mm -hmm. and I found it as an she told me, Oh, you're traveling. Oh, since you're going to Egypt, you can uh you know you can make these videos and you can do as these people are doing. Mm -hmm. And I started it. Okay. But I wish I knew earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so sometimes I wish I had started YouTube earlier because uh, I remember a time when I traveled, like when mm -hmm. I was in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we went to some place and I met the likes of Rihanna, Michelle Obama, wow. uh, the wife of Will Smith and just lots of... I, imagine if I met them and made videos. I made a video, them. yeah, viral videos. Right? <laughs> And because so, the organization, uh, the organization I was working with at that time is the what had invited them, and we mm -hmm. were only ten of us who had been invited from across the world mm -hmm. to go meet with those guys. It was just amazing. If I made videos back then, my channel would be having millions. <laughs> <laughs> and when, when did you start uh, YouTube? 2019 February. 2019. And when did you go to America? 2016, 2017. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, yeah, you, did, I was you didn't know. Yeah, and you didn't know YouTube <laughs> at the time. Yeah, I didn't know YouTube at that time, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. And have you ever encouraged others to start a YouTube channel? Yeah, a lot. I do encourage people mm. and I always enjoy it, especially when I'm working with people who are passionate mm -hmm. about it. Because a lot of times uh, I'm not, uh, the truth is, I'm mm -hmm. not a very patient person. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a very patient person. Right. So if I'm trying to help somebody and I feel like they are lagging or they are dragging or they are mm -hmm. feeling, or I feel like I'm pushing them so much, mm -hmm. I just stop. Okay. I, I'm not very pushy, so I just stop yeah. so that they can just do what they want. I don't like pushing people. But uh, one of the peoples I've, people I've helped, uh, like the last country I was in, Guinea-Bissau, mm -hmm. I helped two people start, fam uh, start YouTube channels. One of them is the Darame family. I was so proud. They got monetized in three weeks. Jeez, man. In three, three weeks. weeks. And they keep yeah. posting and they're so consistent. I'm just so mm. proud of them. Like, okay. when I look at that, like, because they were not YouTubers. In fact, mm -hmm. they were not, like, really into that social media and all that. Mm -hmm. But when they started and they became, like, he picked it and he was so serious about it. And even yeah. right now, he's very, very, very consistent. So it's easy. And then I just, you know, when, especially when someone is at zero, mm -hmm. you have to share, 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 share right. them. Share them. Especially if someone is making effort yeah. and following instruction and eager to learn. Because I noticed they were eager to learn. Right. They were eager to learn. And even without that, I noticed, even without me showing 
him some things. If he wanted to know something, he would go and Google, and you find he has done it. Mm -hmm. So he's not the kind of person who was expecting me to te to do everything for him. So yeah. the things he didn't know, yeah. he could Google. Yeah. And, so and get fashion, Google yeah. and look for uh, information about what he doesn't know mm -hmm. on other YouTube platforms. Like there are these YouTube channels that mm -hmm. have tutorials of how to run a channel, how to monetize, how to do these things. Yeah. So when I find someone who's eager like that, it's much easier for us to work. Wow, amazing stories. Eh? Yeah. My last question as we end this interview. Uh, how long are you going to be in Zimbabwe and uh, what kind of content can we expect from you for your stay in Zimbabwe? How long am I going to be in Zimbabwe? <laughs> yes. Am I allowed to be here forever? <laughs> <laughs> of course, why not? <laughs> we organize a residence for you and everything. <laughs> Permanent forever. Yeah. <laughs> um, my length here will de is dependent on a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I can be here forever, I can be here two days, I can be here one week, nice. I can be here one month, one year. Mm -hmm. So like, I always go with the flow. That's the what would de depend on how long, uh, will determine on how long I'm going to be here. Mm -hmm. As well as my content, uh, a lot of times it's not really as scripted, it's pretty random. Mm -hmm. So expect a lot of randomness from Zimbabwe, expect a lot of random videos and probably things and places you've never seen from here in Zimbabwe from my perspective. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And uh, what is your next country after Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, my next destination is, I don't know. No, I never no. know my next destination. Right. Even coming here, mm -hmm. I didn't know I would be here this year. Okay. So I would just... There's something that normally comes to my mind and tells me, go here. And then you go. And then I go. When, oh. when that thing would come and I start researching about the country mm -hmm. and I see the country is open and maybe I don't need visa, I don't have struggles getting to that country, mm -hmm. I'll just book a ticket and go to that place. So I, I don't know my next destination. So pray that thing comes and tells me your country so I can be in your country <laughs> next time. <laughs> okay, oh, thank you so much uh, for being here and sharing uh, your views. Uh, so guys, that was the African Tigress. Uh, subscribe to her channel. I'll put a link in the description box and also subscribe to my channel. We're trying to get to 10,000. She's heading towards 200,000. 200,000 <laughs> and a million in the next and two a years. And a million, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Cheers, guys.